What's up, Crave? Pastor Epi here, the director for our School of Ministry and Leadership. And I am so pumped to start this series of royalty. Like, look at this set, y'all. Like, I got to try out that crown one day. It's going to be awesome. But today, I'm going to talk about the concept of masks. Now, I know that sounds kind of weird, like mask, like singular. It's, it's, it's okay. But when you say it plural, it kind of sounds like a snake, like masks. So don't, don't giggle when I say that so many times throughout this sermon tonight. But look at this. Wearing masks, I t- don't giggle. Wearing masks is, is something that we do unintentionally sometimes. Or some of us might do it for a purpose, whether it is to protect ourselves, whether it is to show that we're worthy of love or worthy of attention in some way or another. And the thing is, if I can point out several masks here that I have for you, I told you guys, it's this one. It's the I'm okay mask. A lot of us wear it. And and we put this on and we create this because we, we don't want people to know what's really going on on the inside of our lives. Whether you broke up with somebody, whether your home life is really hard right now, but you just, you just put this on. And, and I know my experience as a youth pastor, I would go talk to my youth students and they would wear this mask all the time. And I'd say, yo, what's up, man? How you doing? They'd say, I'm okay. Everything's fine. Cool. Awesome. Good talking to you, buddy. Have a good one. Right? There's another mask I want to show you that we might create in our lives. And, and this is for, I, I think, of people that are in athletics or maybe people that have huge accomplishments, whether they're playing football, basketball, baseball, whatever it may be, their identity, their worth, their value gets wrapped up in what they do. And so they might wear this mask, the I'm number one, I'm a champion. Look at me. Because on the inside, what's really boiling up is, do you care about me? Well, like with football and baseball and all this stuff, like people might cheer me on and say that I'm the best, but who am I when I graduate and I'm no longer playing these sports? Who am I if I fail at some but at something? Like, like you, you can't wear this mask that much and, and, and you feel like you're suffocating to death because all that pressure, that anxiety, you know, that, that fear. Another mask is this. And maybe it's not something that we create per se, but it's something that we adopt. It's a mask that when, whether your, your family says it or your friends say it or really mean people at school say it, they say certain things that, that talk about your identity. They might say, you're ugly, you're fat, you're dumb. They might say other words that I can't say right now. And so what you create is this mask called loser. Well, if they say it, the people I respect, the, the people I look up to, if they acknowledge me as this, then I, I must be this then. And you live up to that identity that people call you. But on the inside, the way I picture it is that small child huddled in a corner saying, stop it. I'm not that. You, you see, guys, we can make so many different masks and have so many different identities. Once again, that our identity can actually look pretty jacked up like this. I'm fine. I'm popular. I'm great at sports. I'm really smart. I'm really angry. I'm really cynical. You know, you find your identity in other things. And the crazy thing about wearing masks is like, we don't just have one. We have so many, not only at school, but also at church. And then we have one for home. It's like, you don't even know who you are anymore. And and once again, you wear these masks to have that control. Like, can we just be real quick? Okay, for those of you that have Instagram, right? You might have one that your parents can see and you have another one that's really you. What pictures do you put up there? Like, do you ever like wake up in the middle of the morning and and, and your hair's all over the place and you're looking all jacked up and you're like, oh, this is perfect for Instagram. I'm gonna get tons of likes. And you take a picture. You don't do that, right? You, you suck it in, <laughs> you, you smile, and you probably take 100 pictures, and you put up the best one. Because once again, you want to control what people see. You want that affirmation. You want those likes. You want those shares. You want those comments. And so that's what we do with Max. 
and it's confusing. So let me just ask you a question before we dive into scripture today is this, are you wearing masks? Do you know who you really are? Tonight, if you feel like you're stuck in the middle of an identity crisis, God wants to show you your true and real identity that's found in him and not in a mask. Are you with me, Crave? Let's go. If you open up your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, and if you don't have your Bible, it's on the screen. Boom, told you. Here we go. It says this. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Now for you Bible scholars right there that know the Greek, there's a specific Greek word here that talks about masks. You see, once again, the New Testament is written in the Koine Greek. And in the culture of the Greeks, they used to have actors. And these actors, as they're acting in front of stadiums, they didn't really have good makeup back then. So they would have to wear literal masks to show whether they are the good person or the villain or a demon or a fairy, whatever. So there are so many different masks that they would have to wear. Do you want to know what that Greek word for Greek actor was? Let me hook you up. Hippocritas. We get the English word hypocrite. Ooh, can we read that again real quick? So put away, Peter says, all malice and all deceit and acting and masks and envy and slander. What Peter is saying is this, before you came to Christ, yeah, you might've had to wear these to cope. You you might've had to wear these because this is the best that I can do. This is the best that I know how to do. But he says, now that you have Christ, put away the acting, put away the masks. And like newborn babes, a newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up in salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Let me summarize it here, guys. Before Christ, this is what brought you comfort. This is what brought you security. This is what brought you meaning in life. But now that you have Christ, you can put it away and you can continually taste and continually see how good the Lord is. You can continually seek him out and say, Lord, what is my true and real identity? So so what does this mean for us today? Well, once again, is it okay to be a hypocrite? No, but real quick, I, I know a lot of people might say, especially as I was growing up, I heard this a lot. A lot of people don't want to come to church because there's hypocrites there. Have you heard that? Well, think about it like this, okay? Going to a hot, like, like saying you don't want to go to church because there's hypocrites is like going to a hospital and saying, oh, there's sick people here. Like at church, we admit we jacked up. <laughs> we admit we need Jesus. We admit we don't have it all together and we need utter dependence upon God. And so the thing is, guys, what Jesus said, he said, look, with these hypocrites, he, he talked about them 18 times in the gospels. He said, for people who wanted to please man and not God. In Matthew 6, 2, he says, when you give to the poor, don't be like the hypocrites by saying, hey, look at me. Find my identity, how great and giving I am. In Matthew 6, 5, he says, when worshiping and praying, don't be like the hypocrites that go, hey, look at me. Look how holy I am because I want the applause from you. In Matthew 6, 16, he says, when you fast, don't be like the hypocrites that look for attention, that they, oh my gosh, I haven't eaten since breakfast. It's lunchtime, bro. <laughs> like, I know, I'm doing it for God. Right? He says, stop it, knock it off. And then in Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 through 5, when judging others, don't be like the hypocrites that, oh, look at him, he's horrible or she's horrible, right? When they are acting in such a way that is not honoring to God. Jesus calls us out. Don't be acting the part, guys. Don't be acting all holy than thou. Don't don't say that you're okay when you're really not. Be real. And then Paul, 
Oh, guys, if you read the book of Romans, it's so amazing. He goes over the history of salvation. And what he's saying is basically, look, hey, we were jacked up. We were hopeless and helpless. But then God sent his son, Jesus Christ, and through the cross, guys, we have new life. And then he gets to chapter 12, and he says, guys, in chapter 12, this is what it means for us. He says this in in chapter 12, verse 2, it's our reasonable service to offer our lives to God and say, God, I desire my mind to be transformed. I no longer want to live how I lived before Jesus, but I desire to live like Jesus today. In verse three, you know, Paul says, don't think highly of yourselves. When you give your life to Christ and you say, God, I want to follow you. I am not going to be puffed up in pride. I'm not going to wear that number one mask saying, I'm the best. I'm the greatest. He says, no, don't think highly of yourselves. Take off that mask. In verse four, he says, the reminder that we are all members. Look at this. You are not isolated. You are not alone. When you love Christ and when you give your life to Christ, you're part of a community. You're part of a family. This is part of your identity. In verses six through eight, he says, use the giftings God has blessed us with, with excellence. Well, what the saying is right here is, is Paul saying, look, you're bigger than your accomplishments. You're bigger than your achievements. You're bigger than your sport. You're bigger than whatever it is because the purpose that God has for you is bigger than it all. But look at verse nine, Romans chapter 12, verse nine. He says this, let love be done without hypocrisy. Let love be done without acting. Let love be done without masks. Think about it, guys. If your youth leaders come up to you and you say, hey, how are you? And you put on that mask and you say, I'm okay. How can that youth leader really love on you and encourage you, build you up, pray for you? If you talk to your parent or your guardian and and they say, hey, how was school today? It was okay. But when really you were picked on and you felt alone, how can your parent or guardian nurture you and love you or offer insight and wisdom? You're keeping them from a distance. Because if we're going to love our family, if we're going to love our tribe, if we're going to love our community, if we're going to love at all, let it be done without the mask. Are you with me, Crave? And as I was preparing for this, I can't help but think of that person that's watching this right now and be thinking, these masks, like, this is all I've ever known. Well, like, like this, this is all I feel comfortable with, man. Like, and, and like, you're, you're holding on to all of them, right? You're like, yeah, like, who am I without the mask? Can I speak to your heart? Brother, sister, look at this. Your identity in God is unchanging. Your identity in God is for sure. It never ends. And here's what the Bible says, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. But people say that I'm fat. People say that I'm ugly. The Bible says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made by God himself. In the book of Romans, it says that you are more than a conqueror, but I'm a failure. I'm afraid of failing. I'm afraid of all. No, the Bible says that you are more than a conqueror, but I'm unloved. I'm unlovable. No one will ever care about me. The Bible says your identity, you are beloved by the amazing God that created the heavens and the earth, that you are the apple of his eye. The Bible says that you are a saint. You might be thinking, but did you know what I did yesterday? Do you know my thoughts? Well, the Bible says your identity is not in your past mistakes. Your identity is in the work of Jesus Christ and you are a saint. You are whole in Christ. You are washed clean. You are forgiven. And look at this. You are made with purpose. So how does this apply to our lives? Is we need to release this control of these masks and we need to surrender to God to live in the identity and the affirmation of God and not man. And we need to encourage others to put down their masks as well. Scripture calls us to be real, to be authentic and quit 
the acting. And it's our responsibility to live as his children. If we are truly God's children, we can't continue to live in sin or live in ways that create a false identity. So I wanna encourage you today, Crave, as we end our time is this, is to put down the mask. Ask the Holy Spirit, which identity that is not glorifying to God have I been holding on to? And would you give me the strength to put it down? Would you give me the strength to live in your identity? And here's your homework, Crave. On your mirrors, I want you to write out an identity that scripture says, whether it be you're more than a conqueror, you're fearfully and wonderfully made, whatever it may be that you're holding on to right now and live in that. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. And I thank you so much that you call us to live a real and authentic life. And I ask you, God, as we reflect and we try to see what masks we have created and that we're holding on to or that are so hard to let go, would your Holy Spirit empower us to surrender? Because the identity that you have for us is far better than any identity that we can create for ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen.